Welcome, and uh, thank you so much for being here again. I miss these so much. I miss being in Charlotte. I miss uh, going to the Pink House every month. It's been nice to see you here online. And um, some of your videos aren't coming up here yet, but uh, I'd like to see everyone's face again. It's awesome. Nice to see so many of you. Now, Carol Ann is the manager of Denise Antonacci Salon, and she's going to be our first guest tonight. And actually, Carol Ann, can you do me a favor and introduce your salon and also your artist's name that's going to be working with you tonight? I will. Hi, everybody. Thank Hi. you so much for including us in this wonderful evening. We're always honored to do anything for Carolina Breast Friends in the Pink House. So tonight, um, I have one of our senior stylists. Her name is Julie Yamada, and um, she is going to speak to everyone about scalp care and the importance of scalp care. Yeah, we're really excited about that. And um, for those of you who don't know, we are a salon in South Park over behind Whole Foods. And um, so when all of the craziness kind of settles, we hope to get to see everybody in person, but we'll take Zoom as the second best for sure. <laughs> so I'm going to remask and then get within distance of Julie and introduce her. And she is really excited to share everything with all of you. And we're gonna do a live demonstration, which should be fun. So I will turn the camera over to her and um, we'll save questions until the end. And anything you may wanna ask, you can, we'll go ahead and do that at the end, okay? So with that, let me remask it up here. And this is Julie Yamada. Hello, everyone. My name is Julie. I'm a colorist and stylist here at the Denise Antonacci Salon. I'm so honored to be speaking with you. And I'm going to be talking about something that I think we all neglect in our hair care routine. Now, it's something that we do for everything else. We do it on our skin, our faces, um, but we always forget to do it on our hair, and that's exfoliating. Um, our scalp exfoliate, we have it here at our salon, it's by Kerastase. Um, it's a sea salt treatment. And hair care really starts at the scalp. So most importantly, we wanna start by treating that first. Um, this treatment will get rid of pollutants, any buildup, excess oil, which can block your hair growth. So it's a great treatment for you know helping your hair stay healthy, clean, um, we use it as a cleanser as well as you would as your skin. You can do it on your face at night when you wash your face. You want to do the same thing for your hair. Um, so this treatment, we have two of them. One is for oily skin, uh, oily hair, uh, and we're going to be using that on Lynn, one of our assistants, because she has an oily scalp. And so we're going to show you how to use that to cleanse. Um, there's also one for other, every other hair type. Um, and so we have additives, which are all aromatherapy sense, which is really great too, because it should be a spa treatment for you. Um, it's something that's an addition to just a relaxing night. You want to draw a bath like I do. Um, I put this on, I let it sit, I relax, and uh, it's a really great way to start off your hair care. So I'm going to take you over to the sink, and I'm going to show you how we use our scalp treatment. Come on with me. Funny the camera went so down. I think she muted. <laughs> again? She muted herself. There we go. Nope. She's back on mute. Gal, that needs a free treatment. So, what I'm going to do is take feet relax on. Okay, I'm not French, so my pronunciations of this is horrendous, but we have three different scents um, of aromatherapy to add into the treatment. So it's super luxurious. It really does make you feel good. Um, so I already damp, wet down Lynn's hair. So I'm gonna take about a walnut size of the scrub. You can see here, it is literally an exfoliant, which is super cool. And then I'm going to add in a couple drops of this. And if you want to zoom into Glenn's hair, you can see that it is a little oily. She's got really, she's got a lot of fine hair. So her scalp needed something that was going to be for the oily scalp. 
So I'm just going to massage this into her root. Really get it in there because we're trying to treat the scalp. So we want to heal it from the scalp down. And add a little water. And emulsify that in. And you'll start to see that it all suds up. So it's really cleansing and pre treating that scalp. This is going to help with so many different things. And it really just feels so good. What does it feel like, Lynn? Do you feel like a tingling? Not yet, but it definitely smells amazing. Super relaxing. We all deserve a little treatment here and there. We've had a hard couple months to spoil yourself with your hair treatments. So once that suds up, I really got it throughout the scalp. I'm gonna let that sit on for a couple minutes because it is, it's just such a nice way to keep your hair healthy and strong and growing. Do you have any questions while I let yeah. this sit? We can do some questions if anyone has any questions right now. Hair she's... questions, scalp questions, any questions? All right. How, how often do you do this type of treatment? I recommend doing it once a week. Okay. You know, it's, it's going to clear up any pollutant, pollutants outside in our world, any, any sort of buildup. And we all use products, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say once a week you can do it, depending on how often you shampoo. If you only okay. shampoo twice a week, you don't need it that much. You do it every other week. Um, but if you're shampooing every other day, it's a good treatment to do once a week to really get that scalp cleansed. It's also safe for color treated hair. So if you have, you know, single process or um, highlights, whatever it may be, it's not going to strip your color. It's gentle, but it does your it does the job. So you can use that. But it's really for every hair type, and that's kind of why we love this um, treatment because we can do it on anybody. How does that smell, Lynn? Amazing. <laughs> How long do you um, have keep the product on? I see you massaging it with, throughout her hair. So how long um, do you do that? If I'm at home, I'll keep it on for 10 minutes. I'll do like okay. a face mask at the same time, make it a whole spa moment for me. Um, for clients, we'll do the same about 10, 15. And then um, we'll do a shampoo after it. So this is your pre-shampoo. This is to really cleanse the hair. And then your second shampoo is to also cleanse, but do whatever the shampoo is meant to do on the hair. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off. Do you feel the tingle, Lynn? Yes. So it has like this nice refreshing, I want to say minty feel. Do yeah. you feel that? Mm -hmm. And it really makes your, it really invigorates the scalp, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And right now I can literally hear her hair feeling squeaky clean, which is <laughs> the best feeling um, because we know it did its job. And it's also feeling super soft. It's not, it's not drying at all. So you're cleansing. And then I'll do one more shampoo. Um, you really, really cleanse the hair. And we condition them and she's all set. But you can really, I wish you could feel this. When, when we can, we would love to get have you all in here for one of these treatments because it is really special. So I'll do one more shampoo. And I'm going to use a Genesis shampoo. This is for hair strength as well as hair growth. It smells great, super light. But you can see, I barely put anything on her hair and it already sets it up because it's super clean already. So the treatment did its job. You guys have any other hair questions or beauty questions?
So I just want to reiterate that scalp hair is super important for whatever level of hair you're in, whether you, you have long hair, short hair, new growth. Um, it's really the most important step to creating a great foundation for your hair. Um, and that's why we are doing this treatment. Oh, loser. Can you, use, can you use this on natural hair? You can use this on any hair type, and that's the cool okay. part. Super Thank moisturizing. You. It'll help. It, it's it's cleansing. It's moisturizing. It's it's really an awesome thing. But you guys should use them at home. It's a treatment you can do at home, which is the most special part. It's not something you can miss a lot. Um, it's just something to add to your beauty regimen to really jumpstart healthy hair. So it's awesome. If you guys have any other questions. Yep. Good. Well, it was an honor speaking with all of you. Um, it was such a pleasure. So I hope you guys learned a little bit. If you ever have any questions, shoot us messages on our Instagram at Mika Tanachi Salon. Um, and we'll answer any questions you ever have about hair, beauty, tips, whatever you need. We're here for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Is there any other questions that, that we could answer for you? No, thank, thank you, you. Carolyn. That's really awesome. What, I, actually, I have a question. What is the name of that product? What is the name of, of what? The, the, the treatment you just used. What was the name again? Kerastase? Oh, uh, it's by, yeah, it's by Kerastase. And uh, it's a Fusio scrub, it's called. Okay, so there's cool. a blue one for normal to dry, and then there's a green one, normal to oily. So uh, like Julie said, we do it here, or you know, you could take it home, but we love good, good scalp care, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, again. thank you for including us. And Let me ask the audience real quick, if you don't mind. In the audience, uh, was anyone there last year when we did the event at the Nice Antonacci Salon? You were, okay. Oh, we had a Andy. great time. Looking forward awesome. to being able to do that again in the future. I know, yeah, we, are too. we are too. We are too soon. Carol Ann, would you mind um, emailing the name of those products so that I can include it in the email to the Absolutely. survivors who are on the line, both the, um, the pre-treatment and the shampoo? And you said they could either purchase the products there at the salon or they could have them applied at the salon? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'd be happy to accommodate anybody or if you want to, someone can email me if you want to share email. We do curbside pickup. Um, if somebody needed anything or had any questions at all, we're always here to, to help out. That would be great. Well, I appreciate that. And I'll pass that information along to everyone Thank who's on you, the Leslie. Zoom today. Thank, Thank you, you so much for so being much. with us. Thanks, ladies. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I have kind of a little surprise guest joining us at the last minute as well. Um, her name is Kate Goldsboro, and that's the name of her company, Kate Kate. Kate Goldsboro Stylist. Um, it's a salon, a boutique. But what I found interesting, we, we, we uh, saw each other for the first time in, uh, in many decades, well, de not many decades, but in decades. Um, uh, uh, sorry about that, that was wrong. But uh, um, we ran into each other here at Erosia, and she had mentioned doing classes that are similar to the conversation I had with you guys a few months back where we talked about inner beauty. And we talked about really the definition of beauty, the meaning of beauty. So we had this interesting conversation about it. And I asked her if she would just put a few minutes in for us um, and talk. I know, uh, just so you know, the bars are open in New York now. So she's in a hurry uh, to, get, <laughs> to get out of here. She's got friends already waiting for her at the bar. But, uh, but I thought, uh, I was hoping she would uh, just put in a few minutes. She actually does classes on this very subject. So can I let you take that over? Sure. Yeah. Hi. Am I sideways? I should go either way, either way. Um, yeah, I'm Kate. And I have a boutique and a salon, as he said. And I help people with their hair, their makeup, their clothes. And I live in New England where everything's very natural. So I work very much with products that don't have parabens and sulfates and everything that I 
cell is uh, good for what you put in your body, on your body, so sell wine as well. But um, I teach a little class, Inside Out Beauty, and the, what the students learn is that my tagline, beauty is a decision, is the strong point of what I teach, which is beauty is a decision, and it means that routine is the important thing for establishing certain happiness and getting your verve back. And what I find with the clients that I work with that have had cancer is sometimes they've lost their mojo and they don't feel sexy anymore. And people are always surprised that when they sign up for my class that I'm not teaching them how to blow dry their hair or put on makeup. That's, um, the class is six weeks long and it really establishes how you come into your day. So it's really about a routine and the first week and everybody works in partners because people is, uh, we find accomplish more when they work in pairs or have an accountability buddy. And so the things that I teach to establish a certain centeredness and happiness, it's a lot of work, but it's a fun class. And so then we have the group meeting but the first week, we work on getting centered. And that means, what's the first thing you do in the morning when you get up? And I have everybody get to their mat, and I teach people how to do a quick meditation. And I teach four or five different meditations, and they're um, recorded so they can choose. What, if I need this day, I need this, and that day, I need that but it gives them a lifetime of um, little things they can go to when they're either afraid or they need a decision or something like that. But that's the foundation for your day is a little getting centered. And the next thing that I teach is move your body. So the hardest thing about finding a, a physical routine for people is finding out what they will do and stick with. So that's the main thing is like I work with every single person to find out what is the thing that actually turns them on that they'll keep doing. So I have a little, um, a couple of different things that are on. I had one girl from Russia who would never, never, never do anything that involved moving her body. And so I turned her on to this little 15 minute routine that is on a video called, um, detox, yoga detox. So that's the whole key is what will you do? So the next thing we try to go to something fun and not so hard and we do grooming. So it's very important to not slop around, if, especially sitting around in your house, to not slop around, to be very disciplined about the fact that you dress for yourself and you dress for your day, no matter what's happening. And from there, we go on to eating. And I don't teach what to eat, I teach how to eat. And I teach you to eat like the Queen of England and to make sure you have a placemat and that you're sitting down, you never, never eat standing up. And the, the whole thing about eating, it's, these are all really fun videos. And it's really important to acknowledge that they say, you know, death looks over your shoulder when you stand up and eat. And it's very important to sit, eat, make yourself a placemat, and make sure that you're um, doing it peacefully and nothing else is going on, no TV and all those things. So that's one of the hardest ones. Then we move on to your clothes, and we do all the clothes, and then we do organize your stuff. And one of the things that they say is women become less depressed when there's less stuff around. So once your stuff is organized, and we do all this in pairs, so it's really fun. So while you can come to the salon and get your hair done and get your clothes looked at and have your makeup done, those things just give women a boost so that they can then address the other stuff. If you feel ugly and lost, it, visually, it's hard to then um, go for the routine. 
But I grew up um, buying horses off the racetrack. And they were very sad and very confused and very lost, completely disenfranchised. And what I learned training horses is you start with the routine. You feed them at the same time, you walk them at the same time, they get brushed at the same time. And once you establish routine, an animal can grow and expand and their intuition in the world completely changes. And so I started applying that to my students and it's made a miraculous difference. So this is the most important thing it, that I find is really find a, a buddy because it's really hard to change in isolation and do something, uh, take any of those notes that I've given you and, and address these things with an accountability buddy. You don't have to take a class. But you can once for once a week, every day, talk about how I'm doing it and then add on and add on. That's, that's my Inside Out Beauty class and I hope it helped. Do we have any I, questions for Kate? I think those are words of wisdom, Kate. I really agree with everything that you said. I think a routine is so important to keep our spirits up and getting dressed every day and looking nice, even if it's just for ourselves. You gave us so many wonderful tips to try to keep our mood elevated and we all need that during this pandemic. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. I just have one question. How, how, how long are the uh, meetings? You said six weeks for how long? Is it 30 minutes, an hour? Um, the class itself, we have an hour once a week on Zoom together, but then partners work every day together. So every week I assign a partner, a new partner. So like I'm eating, you'll, you'll work with a different partner than you will on grooming. And I teach a little technique how to work so you're not giving each other advice because women love to give each other advice, but that's not really what we need we need to get the um the negativity off the top of our brains to so that we can get to the intuition so you sort of barf out the thing and no 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 feedback no giving advice and then um we go back to saying how we've done every day on the topic of all those topics that i told you one week a whole topic every day you work with the partner Meaning, no, you can touch base for 15 minutes, you can touch base just by text, but you need to touch base with your partner every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It sounds like an awesome program. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. The hardest part for me is to get, you know, I have it all organized. The hardest part for me is that since the pandemic happened, everybody and their brother was putting out classes, so I stopped putting mine out. I mean, everybody's email is so full, so I thought, well, I'll just wait till it's needed. And so, so you're saying that your class is not available now by Zoom if any of our survivors wanted to sign up? No, if you go on my website and if, you, if there's a little box that said, would you like to sign up for Kate's class, if you all, if people want to sign up, obviously I'll start a class again. It's a great time to do it in the fall. Spring is great too. Generally, I do it twice a year, spring and fall. So yeah. Kate, what is your website? It's called kategoldsboro.com. And Goldsboro is G-O-L-D-S-B-O-R-O-U-G-H. That's a nice New England last name. Yeah, English. <laughs> so it's kgoldsboro.com? Yeah. Okay. So how many, go ahead, Angie. I'm sorry. So how many has to attend the class in order for you, you know, like sometimes if you don't have enough people to attend. So what is your number to make sure you have enough I mean, people I've, to I've attend? I've done it for six and it was really fun. It's okay. really nice if it's a, an even number. If it's not an even number, I jump in and partner with people. Okay, awesome. Okay, thanks. Somebody else gets me. But I'm okay. not here 
plug, I'm not here to plug the class. I'm here to tell you what makes us happy and what gets our sexiness going again in the world is doing a routine and doing all these things that are self-care. You hear self-care in the world, but when you actually get told what the self-care things are, this is everything from my experience. It's been an unhappy child, you know, 20 year old to somebody who's centered and happy. How, and I really dug deep. What were the things that changed that for me? So those, those topics, whether you do it with a buddy or somebody else, these are things that women really, really grab onto. And the class that sometimes they say, oh, it's so difficult, but it's so worth it to establish yourself. Well, I will share your website with our survivors and um, it's possible that you may hear from some, several of them who might want to have a group that already knew each other. Yes, that, that's so nice. It's such a pleasure to have you with us today and what a nice surprise. Oh, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Kate. That is awesome. Isn't thank you awesome? so much. Yes, she was very awesome. All right, you deserve a drink. You need to get to that bar. I be careful. You. Thank you. Yeah, be careful. Wear that mask. Yeah, take care of yourself. Thank you, William. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, so your volume is not on. Turn your volume off. Just for a second, and then I'll get you. All right, everybody. Wait, we're echoing again. Wait, should I mute? Yeah, you got Mute. There, okay, good. So, thank you guys uh, for your patience on our little technical difficulty there. But anyway, wasn't that nice? That was really interesting. I, uh, I don't know if anyone was in, in attendance. It was one of the last ones we did at the Pink House where um, I talked about inner beauty. And, um, you know, uh, so my conversation is going to link into a little bit what she was saying a little bit later too. But first, I would like to introduce the amazing Deborah Altizio. So if you can find her in there. Um, we, we have to mute one at a time. Unmute and unmute one at a time. There she is on my screen. Oh my gosh. Um, so Deborah was here, um, what was it, two or three months ago? What was it, three? It was like three months ago, and I don't know if any of you guys were in attendance, but I had heard that uh, uh, he was, she was uh, rated the favorite guest artist we've ever had. Right? Is, am I right on that, Leslie? You are so right on that. She was amazing, and I'm so excited she's with us again today. Absolutely amazing. And he's the one that got me through my quarantine because uh, she was uh, putting up these lovely uh, makeup tutorials on Instagram. And there was just something about her energy and the way she was at such a dark time at, at that period was, um, it was just so nice to see someone with this positive energy come across so well on her IG. And I don't even, I don't even care to learn makeup and I was still watching the makeup tutorials. So uh, I was just really enjoying it and I was so happy to bring it to you. And since uh, this being uh, Cancer Survivor Awareness Month, is that how I'd say it? Yeah? Wait, I'm trying to unmute. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October. Oh, excuse me. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we thought we'd do something special and bring her back. Because, again, uh, there's such great energy and so much great information. So I'm going to mute now. And, Deborah, you take over. And uh, I'll see you in a bit. Hi. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's doing great. Um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, I wanted to um, brief up a little bit. For, I, I think it's been three months. So my memory, I have to go back into my memory log on what I um, spoke about with all of you. I think primarily what I touched on uh, my session was how to create products for your skin, skincare products, by going into your refrigerator and finding things around you um, that are edible and putting them on your skin. It doesn't have to be a product that is very expensive. There's a lot of home products you can use for, um, for having beautiful skin. 
Uh, so I did, uh, oh, also let me introduce myself for a few people that maybe have, did not see me on three months ago when I was on. I have been doing makeup for many, many years in New York City. I am a celebrity, fashion, advertising, makeup artist. I pretty much do it all except for motion picture. Uh, so that is something I, in my career that I didn't really want to focus on or special effects is another thing that I don't really focus on. I wanted to work with women and bring out their beauty. So I chose more of a fashion, a celebrity, um, that course to do my makeup. And uh, like I said, I've been doing makeup for many, many years. And um, I've worked with a lot of people um, that you might know, that you might see on TV. I've worked on Project Runway. I've worked on Celebrity Apprentice. I have worked on um, a lot of famous people like Megan Fox, um, uh, Paris Hilton. So a, lo a lot of those people that you might recognize. So I still, to this day, also work with um, some of the best makeup artists in the world, learning still, keeping my mind open for um, new techniques, always staying up on top of my career and my, my craft, because it's important to, um, to share with you a lot of new innovative things that are, that are coming out. And um, I, like, I see a lot of, speaking about that, I see a lot of uh, progression in organic products. So that's why I want to loop around again um, to share with you, uh, you know, there are a lot of good products that you can use at home. A lot of people are steering away from the chemicals, putting a lot of chemicals on their skin, and they would, uh, they're working more with organic products that are good for your skin and um, they show a lot of improvement. So I believe I spoke about uh, products that you have, such as bananas or pineapples or papaya, which are really great for your skin, putting on your skin um, for masks. Uh, papayas are also good to eat the seeds that are very good for you as well. So in just, you know, if you have oily skin or if you have dry skin, depending on what type you have, you would use different products to, um, to help improve the texture of your skin or maybe antioxidants which um, you would turn to maybe avocado or oranges to bring, build up the collagen. So I am a big fan of using a lot of um, products that are in your refrigerator and around you to, uh, to put on your skin, to make your skin glow, any kind of coconut oil or olive oil. Um, and you can have your little uh, ritual, your routine, uh, you can, there's products that you can also um, purchase. I think I had last time I was uh, showing you massagers for the skin. Um, they're uh, little mechanisms that you can uh, buy online and they, they're they wonderful for alleviating any kind of puffiness under the eyes. Um, around the skin you use it and it plumps up the skin. You could also use um, cucumbers are very good as I am talking about the eye area. We, we spoke about cutting cucumbers, putting them in the refrigerator, using cucumber slices if you have any kind of puffiness around the eyes. We also spoke about tea bags, uh, putting your, uh, boiling your tea bag, your chamomile tea bag, uh, boiling your tea bag and then putting it um, in a cup full of um, cotton balls. So then you take that cup and you put that in the refrigerator. And when you're feeling a little puffiness around the eyes or you're feeling tired or if you had some um, procedures done, it's nice to come home and sit back and put your cotton balls uh, soaked in uh, the chamomile tea and that will alleviate any kind of um, puffiness around your eyes or tired if you're feeling tired you just sit back and maybe put a little mask on as well and all of these things are you know they're feel-good things we all want to feel good right um, so I am in the feel-good world so I uh, tried myself when I go do my makeup um, also educating people on the products to use but also inspiring them to 
put these products on themselves because it's super important to take care of your skin. That is you. Uh, even though now that we're wearing masks, we don't see much of it, but the eyes are super important that are, that's out of the mask. So um, you wanna focus on maybe bringing down any kind of puffiness around the eyes. Mm, I believe we also spoke last time about eyebrows. And what I do uh, every night, I put my Jamaican castor oil in my eyebrows so they look fuller and it helps the eyebrows to grow and it stimulates growth. So I use the product for eyebrow growth. Um, I love full brows and I know when you're doing your treatments, a lot of times you might experience hair loss. So this is a good natural product that won't interfere and you can put this on your eyebrows every night. I wouldn't recommend it during the day because it's very oily. So I put this product on at night and I massage it into my brows and it helps grow the brows nice and thick. Um, let me Deborah, see. What I else have did a question. About? Um, I have a question, also, Deborah. Oh, am I muted? I can't hear. Oh, uh, let me let me hire my volume. Sorry about that. Hold on. I put it low. Okay. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, all those uh, interesting things that you were saying from your refrigerator, like avocado, pineapple, how do you make, how do you prepare those fruits so that you can put it on your skin? How do you, how do you make a mask out of a banana or whatever you were recommending? Well, first of all, you Google it. <laughs> 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 because there's so many different recipes that you can put, um, you know, using these products. So what I would do is I would focus on your particular skin type. If it's dr if whatever you're, you feel like your skin is too dry or you have eczema, there's always a product in your refrigerator that will take care of whatever the problem is that you have. So what you would do is you would mash it up and you might sprinkle, let's say if you want to do honey, you would, it's very easy. You take a mixing bowl you uh, put your honey in and you put your brown sugar and then you get a little spatula and then you apply it on your skin. You sit back, you, uh, you might want to do the cucumber on your eyes and then you rinse it off. It's pretty easy. You just let it sit for a while. And okay. also uh, if you put a little bit of egg white in it, it, it will um, solidify a bit. So there's a lot of different recipes that um, there's so many of them that you can look up depending Good. on your skin type. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, so yes, it's about uh, looking good, feeling good, um, and it's it's about moisturizing your skin. That's super important. Also, sunscreen is super important. Uh, whatever, if you use a cream that you like, if it has a little bit of sunscreen in it, that's very important to protect the skin. Um, as uh, you know, the UV rays can be a bit damaging to your skin. So we want to do a little bit of um, protection uh, as well. So we don't wrinkle and, and, uh, and you know, uh, our, our skin looks um, good from the sun. You have to do extra moisturizing because you can be a little dried out from that. And um, some of the products that uh, I chose to tell you about uh, which are my favorite, are the RMS, which is coconut base. It's a beautiful uh, skincare and makeup line developed by a friend of mine. Um, her name is Rosemary Swift. She's a makeup artist as well. And she developed uh, a whole line um, organic uh, coconut for the skin. And they're beautiful colors and their lipsticks and their blushes. You can interchange a lot of the it, most of them are cream based, so they interchange through the whole um, face. You can use them as blush or lips or eyeshadow. Uh, that is actually one of my favorite products that is 100% organic. Um, there's also Pink Elephant that I spoke about, a nice oil for the skin. And A Cure is also a good uh, brand for uh, products. May Lindstrom is a great brand. And I've recently discovered, I'm very excited because I uh, recently did a photo shoot up in, in upstate um, Hudson Valley, which is becoming very, very popular in New York. A lot of people are going up north 
and a lot of uh, the photo studios. There's a photo studio that's opening there, opening up there. So it's a very uh, hip um, place that to get out of the city since a lot of people want to get away for the weekends. And uh, I met someone that has a, a hemp-based skin oil, which I'm very excited about that I have ordered um, to try. And uh, I, I found that really interesting. Um, and you can mix and match your own oils uh, online uh, with this particular company. So uh, that's another ingredient that's a possibility that would, uh, you could try for your skin as well. Um, uh, what else did we talk about? Um, there's also like a blue lagoon masks that, um, you know, stimulate cell growth. And, uh, there's just all there's, we live in a, in a world now that pretty much any, any, any ingredient or any product, um, organic, uh, you can find. Uh, that works well for the skin and I would just recommend you know trying a lot trying products and making yourself you know also feel loved it's like putting this you know for me it's like a ritual when I put on my makeup uh, I have a big mirror I have big lights it's a it's it's a ritual for me every morning you know I take time to um, you know, put beautiful creams on and really moisturize my skin, massage uh, the products in, do my brows, and it's it makes me feel good inside as well as outside. So uh, I would you know recommend um, you know whatever it is that you know might make you feel good. If it's a little mascara or a little bit of liner or a little bit of shadow or a little bit of blush. Um, my thing also is lipstick. I love a bright lipstick. For me, it livens me up. So even if it's just one lipstick, a swipe of color, it brings light, it brings color into your life. So I would um, just enjoy it and play with it. You know, makeup is not permanent. It comes off. So, uh, you know, if you feel like you're making a mistake, don't feel like that. Just try to experiment and try different things. You know, if you go out with your friends, you might put a little bit more on. If they compliment, then you know that you're in the right direction. <laughs> so if, I, if anyone has any questions for me, I am open to um, answering any questions. I don't know where she went. Oh. I have a question. Oh, yes, yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, what was the name of the oil that you put on your eyebrows? Yes, this is um, a, a Jamaican castor oil. You can buy this at the health food store, but it's the Jamaican one, I believe, that is the one that really grows the hair. There's regular castor oils, but just look up the ones that are specifically for hair growth, and some are better than others, and I believe the Jamaican one is, uh, is a really good product. So what I do is if you have... Um, a Q-tip, maybe, maybe have in your bathroom like a little Q-tip or a little cylinder where you put the oil in. Uh, so it's easy access for you because a lot of times uh, if you forget, you wanna make it as easy as possible. Uh, I have already a product that I apply on my eyebrows, so it's empty, so I just take that. It's like, it looks like a lipstick applicator, like a, if you, a, a lip gloss. So it's something like that. So I, I put it in there and then um, I put it on every night. And then what you also want to do is massage it in, uh, you know, whether it's with your finger or with a Q-tip, you kind of really want to massage it. You want to move it this way and then you, you want to move it the other way, not only in one direction. Okay, so you really want to massage it into your eyebrows. It's going to be very thick. So it's a very thick consistency. Um, a, a little goes a long way, so you want to order the smallest bottle that they have because um, it, it's, it goes a long way. It's very thick. And just massage it. Uh, I do that in my eyebrows. And on my eyelashes, I use another product that um, because the, the castor oil is a little thick for the eyelashes. So I use a different product called Lalash for that. And there's uh, specific 
eyelash um, growth serums as well. But I try not to do the castor oil because it, it's a little thick. If you're going to do the castor oil on your eyelashes, just really do it very sparingly, right where they grow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I had a question. I was going to ask about the eyelashes also because mm -hmm. mine really didn't come back. They're very mm -hmm. faint. I have one long one, but the rest of them, are, and it's been a year. So is it okay. safe for it to grow, you know? Well, I don't know if you can see my eyelashes, but these, yeah. I had very, I, I've never had eyelashes like this in my life. Uh, so... I don't know. I know that um, they mentioned that you have to be careful with the ingredients uh, of what you're using. Right. So I, I, I didn't research that for you, but there is one product that I use that I can't be without. I do, I do it in my eyebrows during, during the day. I, don't, I use the castor oil at night, but then during the day I use this product. It's from Canada and it's called um, Lilash and Labrow, L-I-L. Okay. L-A-S-H. Uh, so that is one of the only things that worked on growing my eyelashes crazy like spiders. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I'll try it. <laughs> so that was, so I cheat a bit. I use the eyebrow in my, uh, my lashes. You're, you're probably not supposed to, but it works. I, I probably wouldn't recommend it. There is a lash and then there's an eyebrow one. It's, it's okay. separate. But I've used so many products and that is the only one on the market that I cannot live without. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Deborah, uh, this is Leslie. Um, I still have your handout from three months ago and um, I wanna send that to everybody today after the presentation, but any new products that you've mentioned, would you mind emailing me the addition of the, the new products? Okay, and I can include that in my email to them as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. You're Thank very you. welcome. <laughs> are you on? Are you on? Are you? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, did you have anything more you want to say? Um. Uh, uh, let's see. I will definitely email you all the products I talked about today, and I believe also uh, we spoke about even though. Uh, you don't have to look like a celebrity to feel like a celebrity. <laughs> I think we spoke about that as well. Since I work on a lot of celebrities, it's not, you know, it's individual. And you have to, inside, everyone has beauty. I, I look at everyone and I see a beauty within them. So just because, you know, you might, you're, might not have a lot of eyelashes or whatever it might be, there's always going to be something beautiful. You know, the, the beauty comes also within here and here. So um, I, I do believe myself, I try to keep a very um, hol holistic or, or um, nutritious um, way of eating. Lots of vegetables, lots of green, you know, fruits, vegetables, and lots of, you know, vitamins. So not only you want, do you want to put the vitamins on your skin, you also want to, um, you know, be taking vitamins that are specifically for you as well. And um, it is, you know, beauty is a feeling just because you, you know, you're not uh, J-Lo or, you know, you know, you're not someone that, you know, uh, you could look up to these people, but you could always feel super great yourself. And it's, you know, everyone is their own celebrity and uniqueness. Everyone has their own uniqueness. So we have to tap into those things and just feel good, you know, try to tr try to do as much as you, you can and, um, you know, uh, feel good about yourself. And I'm always here to answer any of your questions. If you feel, you know, you, you have, um, you, you you're, uh, working with something or whatever it might be that you might be, you know, experiencing in terms of health and beauty, you could always reach out to me and I can try to answer your questions as best I can. Thank, um, thank you. you so much for having me today. Have a wonderful day and lots of sunshine and stay positive. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. You're amazing. Deborah. <laughs> thank you. Do you want a new person? <laughs> <laughs>
There, now, can everyone hear me? Isn't she wonderful? Oh my God. I remember, yeah. I remember when Leslie told me that she was the favorite guest artist. I was so pleased about it. Um, but then I also, I thought, wait, I've been a guest artist. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how to feel about it. <laughs> but I'm here to speak. I, I absolutely understand that. Absolutely. So it's funny. We, we've obviously captured a theme. And what we did is we brought a few different people together to tell a, a, a story for you and, um, and a story that hopefully helps. And, uh, but the theme has become here really interviewed. And we've had this conversation before. I don't know if you guys were at the Pink House when I did that conversation. Um, I really enjoyed it. But I do this talk a lot for my students because as you know, I'm a beauty teacher. I, I work in a cosmetology school um, and I mentor a lot of young beauty artists. And one of the first things I have to teach them to do is to become a connoisseur of beauty. Um, the number one job that we do is to make people feel beautiful. If, you know, if we can't do that first, then it doesn't matter how well we cut hair, it doesn't matter how well we color hair. Um, you know, making people feel beautiful is, is, is job one. And um, for a lot of these young artists starting out, you know, they're not there yet. They don't know how to do that just yet. So I try and set them on a journey. Um, and uh, and I, I want to have a similar conversation with you today because a, a lot of it is very personal. Um, to me, to become a connoisseur of beauty, you have to see the world exactly as Deborah described it. Everyone is perfectly beautiful exactly the way they are, right? Everyone is, has beauty within. And, uh, and the problem, I think, for uh, uh, cancer, that cancer survivors have to go through is that that vanity takes a hit, right? And that is, vanity, I should say, is the canvas in which we work as a beauty artist, the, the canvas in which I work as a beauty artist. And, um, uh, you know, you can do a lot of good working with people's vanity, and you can also do a lot of damage being thoughtless. But mostly what it is, is understanding what really beauty is. The way I teach my students to approach this uh, is to... Be a connoisseur of beauty. If we know everyone's beautiful around us, to be able to find it, to be able to see it, to be able to identify it. Um, and I think it's really important. And re what, why that helps you is because it helps you discover your own beauty. It helps you discover, you know, so when I was younger, you know, and I can't even relate. I don't even know what it would be like to go through cancer treatment and all that. I, I, I love working with my survivor friends. Um, but, you know, I personally, uh, I, I can't relate to that experience. But what I can relate to is when I was younger, I had very low self-esteem and uh, my vanity was very weak at the time, right? Um, I, I never thought I was a good looking person or anything like that. And uh, it wasn't until later in life where I kind of discovered my beauty and it wasn't my outside, it was my inside where I found it. Um, and, you know, it's kind of ironic, right? Because when I look back at old pictures when I was young, I was actually kind of pretty. No kidding. I mean, you might not believe it, but I'm telling you, I was. And I never even knew that about myself. You know, I look back at old photos and I'm like, really? Is that what I look like? Wow, okay, that wasn't too bad. And, you know, now that I'm getting older and those looks are fading away, now I feel gorgeous. So uh, it's just ironic like that, right? But, um, and really the reason, the way that I found that for myself was by becoming a connoisseur of beauty. Um, I just believe in uh, everyone has it. That's what I look for in everyone. That's what I identify. If there's something I don't like about somebody, I look away. You know, I think it's funny when you see uh, fashion characters on like reality television shows and things like that. They always portray us as being sort of um, catty and shallow and kind of, you know, judgmental and stuff. And I have to tell you, that's not true. That's absolutely not true. I met Deborah on set. Deborah met me on set. And many of our friends, all of our friends have similar perspectives. We're beauty artists, we're beauty artists first. But I was watching this uh, show. It was about fashion. It was one of those reality shows, right? And I remember this, uh, one of the characters walking by and looking at this girl and making fun of her shoes, right? She was like, you know, dude, look at her shoes, you know, something like that, really snotty or whatever. And uh, like I said, one, my first thought was, that doesn't really happen on set. But then my second thought is, if you don't like someone's shoes, don't buy them. You know, if you don't like someone's shoes, look up. You know what I mean? 
uh, keep looking until you find beauty in people. And it's a great practice in life. So it's not just about discovering all the beauty, it's about discovering all the beauty around us. I've been living in New York now since late June. I was living before that in Charlotte for about two and a half, almost three years. And you know, the entire time I spent in Charlotte, I didn't meet one ugly person. You know, everyone I met was lovely people. And uh, you know, it's not that I have anything against ugly people, I just haven't met one. And um, you know, because those are the rose colored glasses I get to wear as a beauty artist. And it's been such a gift in my life. You know, my, again, I'm surrounded by beautiful people no matter where I am, because that's what I can see. And um, it's, it's been such a wonderful gift in my life. And I kind of wanted to just share that perspective with you because it's, it's, it can be a beautiful gift in your life as well. If you're not seeing the world that way now, start to. You know, I have a friend in San Diego. He uh, is a wine distributor, you know, and this guy loves wine. He knows everything to know about wine. And uh, he loves wine so much and knows so much about it that he can actually taste the process when he tastes wine. Now, me personally, I don't love wine. That's not my drink of choice. But um, when you go to his house, he'll have all these carafes set out, you know, and uh, and have little taster glasses, you know, and he'll pour you the wines and make you taste it. And he's so enthusiastic. So for me, not being a wine connoisseur, sometimes I'll taste it and I'll think like, oh, I don't like that. That's, that's not for me, right? But he gets all nerdy, you know? He's like, he's such a connoisseur. He'll, he'll be like, oh no, you know, they put it in the barrel for seven days and then they turn the barrel and, you know, and, and he gets all into the process of it and why he loves it so much. And uh, when, I, when I hear him talk about wine, that's the way I talk about beauty. That's the way I understand beauty in people. You know, I can find the beauty in everyone because I understand so much about it all these years later. And it's funny because, you know, like Deborah, I've been blessed. I've gotten to work with celebrities, uh, models, like celebrated beauties, let's call it, right? And what's interesting is I find just as much beauty in everyone else. Like, you know, I mean, they're the same people. It's the same beauty. It's, you know, I don't know if you've become immune to it or, or, or I don't know. But uh, I, see, I see just as much beauty in everybody. And... Um, and I like what Deborah was saying. You don't have to look like a celebrity to feel like a celebrity, right? Feel beautiful like a celebrity. And I can't tell you how true that actually is. Um, you know, it is about the way you feel about yourself. And going back to what Kate's message was uh, talking about, when I heard all the little elements of her classes, um, the one theme I kept hearing constantly was like, just taking care of yourself. And more than that, treating yourself well. You know, like she was talking about, don't just have a quick dinner, you know, have, you know, set a placemat, make a proper setting, enjoy it, sit down, focus on the food that you eat. What's the point in eating nutritious food if uh, you're watching the housewives at the same time, right? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, why take in a healthy food diet when you're taking in a terrible media diet, you know? And... One of the things about this generation that I feel is toxic for beauty artists and therefore toxic for people that want to feel beautiful um, is some of these reality TV shows. And one of the things I do with my artists very early on in the very first conversation I have with them about it, I talk to them about why I don't like that stuff, first of all, but also what makes it toxic for a beauty artist because it focuses on the worst parts of human nature. So Deborah was talking about nutrition that you bring into your body. So was Kate. Um, I'm talking about your nutrition uh, as far as your media intake. The art you consume matters. You know what I mean? Um, especially for artists, but I think for everybody. Because those shows, they celebrate the worst parts of human nature and they don't focus on what's so beautiful about us. None of them do. Even like the fashion shit ones and even, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the ones where the characters are supposed to be beautiful, right? Um, they focus on all the negative things in life. You know, you always see them arguing. You always see, like, you know, you see just, like, the worst behaviors. Um, and I actually worked on a show one time, and I saw this with my own eyes. Uh, it was called Rihanna. Uh, the singer produced it, along with um, Pharrell Williams and all them. And it was all these designers that were competing uh, making, making collections, making clothes for different rock stars. It's called Style the Rock. 
And I got to do the celebrities for the show. So I was very blessed. I got to do all the celebrities that came on. But it also meant I had to watch all the tapings. And when I saw I was there for this experience, I saw some really beautiful interactions. And I thought this show was going to be an alternative to reality TV. I thought it was going to be a smarter, more heartfelt version of a show like that. And uh, when I was on set, I saw some really amazing things. Like I remember Pharrell Williams, for example. I don't know if anyone's ever seen him in an interview, but that man is really smart, like Yoda smart, you know, like a truly, truly smart man. He doesn't talk a lot, but when he speaks, you know, what he said mattered. And he would be talking to his contestants during the judging aspects of the show. And I mean, he would make them cry because he was so intuitive and thoughtful. And, um, you know, he would say, I can see you're the type of person that does X, Y, Z. And then they start crying like, oh my God, how do you know me so well? And I thought this was gonna be really, really awesome. Now, when opening night came up, it was opening night, and um, I saw some of the editors and producers outside. You know, when, you work, when you're working on set for six weeks with the same crew, you actually, you know, you become friends. And uh, so I seen some of my friends outside of the premiere party, and I asked one of the editors, I said, how does it look? You know, because I had my kids back in San Diego watching. You know, they were, they were prepared to watch the show because um, I was excited about it. And um, uh, I asked him, I said, how does it look? And he said, and please mind my language. In fact, I won't say the word, but uh, this is a quote. He said, it's just another pile of bleep like the rest of them. And I was shocked. I was like, what do you mean? What? We just spent six weeks making a pile of crap? I don't get it. What, what, what were we doing then? And, um, uh, and he told me, and he said, we don't make high quality content because nobody buys it. We won't get ratings. We can't show intelligent content. He said, what we do is we reach for the lowest common denominator. Now, that's a quote, not my quote. That's his quote. This is what he does. He makes reality shows. He goes from one gig to the other. He works on a lot of the shows that you, you, know, you might have heard of. And uh, the fact that that's his behavior towards his audience, that's his perspective on his audience you know, the lowest common denominator. And again, if it's a guilty pleasure of yours, shows like that, I'm not trying to take it away from you. But what I am trying to say is, uh, uh, you know, maybe look at it as a guilty pleasure. Meaning, if you're going to consume, you know, an hour of watching the housewives argue with each other, maybe then too, you can go watch a beautiful documentary on a great artist or something that fascinates you, something that's enriching something that's motivating, something uh, uh, that's inspiring or intelligent, educational, you know, taking in high quality content. I know for artists in particular, um, that is crucial. It is really crucial. Um, and one of the gifts you get from being an artist is you stay youthful in a lot of ways. You know, like the older I get, I feel like the more youthful I get in a lot of ways because I'm always around new inspiration. I'm always around uh, new talent. I'm always around beauty. I'm always around creation. And um, it keeps me young, spirited in a lot of ways. And I see the difference between my artist friends and my non-artist friends. And part of that is that gift of the way we take care of ourselves with, our, with the art we consume and the media we take in. Um, I always say this, uh, an artist needs to treat their heart and their mind in the same way an athlete treats their body. An athlete treats their body like a machine. They eat well, they work out, they practice, they have routines that they do, and it keeps their body strong and ready to compete, right? An artist needs to be the same way. We need, like, what we let in is what will come out. If I'm a beauty artist, and I am technically a beauty artist, um, as a beauty artist, there's no way I can stay up all night watching housewives argue with each other and then make a woman feel beautiful at 9 a.m. the next morning. It's just, it's not possible. It's not, it's not even possible. Um, so I have to be really careful with the art I, I take in. And I've been vigilant about this for years. I don't take in bad media. I don't listen to bad music. I won't watch bad TV. I won't watch bad films. Um, I, I'm very careful in the media I bring in my life because it's a part of me now. I consume it as an artist, you know? And now the gift, again, that I get from that is that 
I get to live life in a really wonderful way. And I love the gift that it's given me. So even those of you that aren't artists, I'm speaking to you directly. Um, maybe think of yourself as an artist when you're looking at your media diet. You know what I mean? Like, uh, as you know, we think about nutrition, we think about taking care of our hair, our skin, things like that. What about taking care of your mind and your heart? You know, letting in bad media does damage. And it also it hurts our self-esteem. Um, it does so many negative things to us. And so I'm saying, even if you're not an artist, why not just consume media as if you're an artist? You know, one is better. You'll get better algorithms, you know, um, uh, you know, in the suggestion box, right? But, but think of it like a diet in a sense. Like, so for me, I eat healthy. I eat a lot of vegetables, tons of salad, lots of fruit. Um, I take care of myself in that way. But now I do have a guilty pleasure. Once in a blue moon, and don't ever tell my kids this because I'll deny it. I'll totally, I'll, I'll totally deny it. Once in a blue moon, I will get a Big Mac. Only when I can get rid of the evidence, no one will know, I have time to throw everything away, brush my teeth, no one's gonna find out. Um, but I will, once in a while, I'll go get a Big Mac. But that's okay, it's a guilty pleasure. As long as I'm eating healthy most of the time, you know, an occasional, blue, uh, you know, Big Mac a couple times a year isn't gonna hurt me that much, right? Um, so think of your media as the same way. If these shows, this entertainment is a, a, a guilty pleasure of yours, you like some of these shows that I'm talking about, I'm not trying to take it away from you. I am asking you to put it in perspective. And if you're going to consume Big Macs like that in your entertainment, uh, make sure you're getting some healthy things too. You know, your algorithms say a lot about you. When I look at people's streaming services, you know, when they have the suggestion files, I can tell a lot about people. When they turn on their Netflix, I know a lot about them right away. I can see what they're consuming. I can see what they're taking in. And I can see if it's healthy or not. You know what I mean? And sadly enough, far too much of what's available to us media-wise in this generation is not healthy. And so I ask you to be careful because it will hurt your self-esteem. Now, I know from all my survivor friends, one of the hardest things to go through uh, beyond the physical, beyond the obvious, is the vanity, you know? Maybe you lose your hair, maybe your nails are terrible, maybe your skin gets terrible, you know? And it's kind of hard to see yourself that way. It's kind of hard to see ourselves anyway. Actually, I read this study um, that I believe is true, that we, that we can't actually see ourselves. When we look in the mirror, we can't see what other people can see. What we see, is a collection of moments through our life that start when you discover your vanity. You know, so when you first discover your vanity as a little girl or a young man, um, uh, uh, you can see yourself from that moment on, but you can't see actually what we see. And I find that interesting because uh, and the sad part about it is when I meet people that don't feel beautiful, that can't see their own beauty, because I can, it always breaks my heart. You know, when people look in the mirror and have the wrong perspective of themselves, they can't enjoy their own beauty. And uh, that always breaks my heart. And a lot of that, again, we bring it back to the media we consume. You know, there's a lot of it that just sort of, I don't know that it's designed to hurt our self-esteem, but it certainly does hurt our self-esteem. You know what I mean? So as we recover, as we get better, um, uh, uh, as, as you heal and your hair does start to grow back in and make up, uh, I mean, you know, facial hair, whatever, it's all starting to come back to what it was. Um, don't let that be the most important part of your beauty. You know what I mean? I know that's hard. That's much easier said than done. I get that. I understand that. But again, beauty is an inside out thing. It's not an outside in. You know what I mean? Believe me, I've met celebrated beauties that aren't all that pretty when you talk to them. You know what I mean? Once you like get to feel their energy and their perspective and stuff, you're like, oh, wow, you're not as attractive as I thought you once were. You know, I remember, and I'm not going to pick on her, but she is a reality star, so I will pick on her. Um, uh, but I remember the first time I saw, and I, again, I don't watch TV, right? So the first time I saw Kim Kardashian, was on the cover of magazines. You know, that's where I was introduced to her when she was on cover, the cover of magazines. Because I do consume a lot of fashion, obviously, consume a lot of magazines. Um, but 
that was the first time I saw her. And when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, she is beautiful. I thought she was stunning. And then I saw her in an interview, right? Then I saw her in an interview and I listened to the interview for about 15 minutes. And I, and I thought, and I was still looking at the same woman and I'm thinking, I can't see what I saw before. I, I, like I had trouble seeing how beautiful she was after that. Because again, beauty is an inside out thing. Now, what I know is that she's playing a character. I'll bet in real life she's an absolute lovely person. I'm sure of it. Because again, everyone's beautiful. Everyone's perfectly beautiful exactly the way they are. But because of what she was portraying, you know what I mean? I couldn't see her inside beauty anymore. And therefore, I couldn't see her outside beauty. Do you know what I mean by that? Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so uh, that to me is like getting the right perspective on what beauty is. We have the wrong aims sometimes. We have the wrong goals sometimes. You know, I mean, especially like I spent time living in LA and I don't know if any of you have had the misfortune of living in LA before, but um, it's, a, it's an incredibly synthetic place. Now I know great people out there. This is not a blanket statement, believe me. I know wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends in LA. Wonderful, beautiful, amazing people. But I also know a lot of really fake people that don't understand what beauty really is. I remember it was a big trend when men were uh, putting calves in, they were getting plastic surgery and they were putting calves in. You know, have you, did you hear about that? Yeah, there was a big trend for a while. I swear to God, it was a huge trend in LA. And for me, I'm thinking, hey, why not just buy a bike? Why not just exercise? You know, get a skateboard. There's many ways to build the calf up that don't cost $5,000, $10,000, right? And, um, and again, they had the wrong perspective on beauty. To have nice calves isn't just about the way they look. It's about how fast and healthy, strong legs. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it, again, beauty's inside out. You know, it's not about what it looks like on the outside. It looks like what it feels like on the inside. And now that, again, all of that is easier said than done. For some people, it's a journey. I know for me in my life, it was a huge journey. You know, like I grew up with very low self-esteem, right? And um, it, it took me a while. And, you know, and now I'm talking deep into my, into my adult life where I actually really discovered the meaning of beauty and what beauty really is and where it comes from. So now I don't care what happens as far as my looks aesthetic. I know I'm beautiful because of what I've become on the inside. And uh, so many people I've met in Charlotte that are survivor friends. Because you know, I think, I, think, I think some of you have been to see me in the salon, in fact. But um, some of you have come to the school and have me do their hair. And I've had survivor friends describe themselves to me in a way that really breaks my heart. Because I'm looking at this really lovely person sitting in my chair and they're telling me how awful they look. And I'm like, wait, that's, I don't see what you see. You know what I mean? And um, so because the vanity takes a, such a huge hit, I always like having that conversation with survivor friends too. Um, I did want to tell you one thing though. Um, and a lot, one of the, one of the common uh, uh, things said to me from uh, survivors that are growing their hair back when they're just getting their hair back or they're trying to, you know, they're in the process of getting their hair. Um, some of them don't want to brush their hair because they're afraid the hair will come out, right? There's hair in your brush, like when you brush your hair, right? Does anyone have that fear? Is that anyone who has heard that or felt that way about themselves? Um, I can't see everybody here. Hold on. All right. Well, I'm not getting a reply. I'm going to assume all of you are good with it. But uh, anyway, um, so as hair is coming back, I like going back to the beginning of the conversation because a healthy scalp is everything. Uh, just like the way beauty is inside out, healthy hair comes from a healthy head. And it's not only, you know, uh, that treatment sounds awesome. I want to get that for myself, actually. I think that's really cool to take all that build up away because that's where uh, a lot of men start using hair um, you know with the natural alopecia you know natural hair loss you know and I'm starting to experience that myself now my hair is actually getting thinner as I get older and uh, um, keeping your scalp clean and healthy is important but what's also important is keeping keeping it brushed I don't care if you don't have any hair 
keeping your scalp brushed and using a brush like this. So let me get a better perspective on it. They're natural bristle brushes, you know, and they get in there and they really scratch. They really, you know, it cleans the scalp, the surface, the dead skin, uh, gets the buildup off, things like that. I, if you, as your hair grows back, just every, every single day, spend time brushing your hair, spend time uh, uh, brushing your scalp. Forget your hair, brush your scalp. You know, really cleanse it from the outside. Uh, cleanse that, the, the dead skin off. And I wanted to mention that only because again, I had so many people. I had one of our survivor friends, uh, particularly I'm thinking of, she, um, every time she would brush her hair, she would see hair in the brush. So she was worried that she would, you know, she was adding to the, uh, the, the hair loss and the thinning and it wasn't going to grow back. But my argument would be this. Um, if it was in your brush when you brushed it, it was going to come out anyway. You know what I mean? It's not like you brushed it out. It was going to come out and it just landed in your brush. So, um, you know, you can't have healthy hair without a healthy scalp. It's absolutely mm -hmm. impossible. Now, I guess we're coming close to the end. So uh, I do want to say something in, at the very end here, but um, uh, do we have any questions for me? I do have a comment from Leanne. She says that she uses, she does brush and she also uses a scalp massager. Yes. So that's good for improving circulation at the scalp. Absolutely. And circulation is the key. This is why I'm brushing it. I, uh, 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 thanks, thank you, Leanne, for uh, saying that because I forgot to say that part. The blood circulation is where the hair growth is coming from. So, um, uh, you know, exercise obviously is good. Anything that increases your blood flow, because that's how it works. The blood feeds the hair follicle, and uh, if that hair follicle is healthy, it'll grow hair, right? It's as simple as that. The blood is where it's nourished. So, the more you get blood flow, by scratching, you know, with the brush and really, you know, you bring blood flow to the scalp, to the follicles. That's where it all grows in. Um, for the products they have for people with thinning hair out there, like people that are losing their hair, not from uh, treatment, but rather just losing their hair. Um, when the treatments basically do the same thing, which is one, they clean your scalp. They get all the buildup off, they get all that off, right? And the second part, usually, the second application, it, it, it increases blood flow to the scalp. And that's really the goal. So as you're growing your hair out healthy, you know, remember that. Your circulation matters. So cardio exercise helps sometimes to grow your hair back, you know? It's more than just serums and potions that they come up with. It's about being healthy and, 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 and increasing your blood flow, keeping your scalp clean, and getting sculpt, uh Getting, getting blood to the scalp, if that makes sense. So um, there was that. So good comment, thank you on that one, I appreciate it. Anybody else? No, I miss, I miss you guys in Charlotte so very much. Um, I miss coming to the Pink House, I miss my friends. Uh, it's been weird uh, trying to organize these with Leslie from New York. But I had to come to New York. Um, it's where the opportunities came to me. But I was in Charlotte for quite some time, and my job was community outreach uh, for, this, for the school that I worked for. I think you guys know, might know that. Um, and because of that, um, I have a lot of connections there still in Charlotte. So what I always like to do at the end of every session that I teach with you guys is to offer to bring you into the school and do your hair for you, you know? And as for those of you that have come to see me, you know I don't charge. Um, I don't, you know, I never charge my survivor friends a, a, a single dime. And um, uh, it's always just, that's, that's what I do. That's part of my giving to this, to this wonderful organization, Carolina Press Friends. Um, that's my way of giving back. But now, since I can't be there, what I can offer you is to, two options. One, you can fly up to New York. And I'll do your hair. <laughs> do that. So it's not free. It's just simply the cost of a flight, right? Um, we can do that. Or option number two, if you would like, um, if you would like to get your hair done and you need someone to work with, I do have a lot of really wonderful friends that did a lot of charity work with me, and I can I can hook you up with somebody that will do your hair for free and will help you 
uh, take care of your hair as it grows back. Yeah. So that's um, wonderful, William. Yeah, I would love to do that for you. Um, I um, so Leslie, what I'll say is um, I'm gonna I'll give you some information. Uh, you know, I'll, you have all my contact information. Feel well, I do, and and the survivors can just contact me, and you know, I I, I know how to find you, William. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So so if, if somebody same, reaches out to me, I will I will find you, and then you can match them with somebody in Charlotte to do their hair. That would be wonderful. I would love it. So yeah, feel free reach out to her, and also Leslie, just feel free to give her my contact info. You know, I, uh, I will. Yeah, if that that might make it easier. Just you know, they can email, email you directly. They can email you directly. And remember, I don't know. I hope you know. Of course, you know this by now. You know my my personal email is William at hairbywilliam.com. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send that to, I'll send that to everybody. And I just want to say, William, and I hope I say this the right way because you just have given us the best gift today. Everything that you said we could tell was from the heart and that you care. And, and I just, this whole, I have to tell everybody, William put together this entire program with Deborah and um, Kate, who was a surprise and Carol Ann Flynn, he gets the credits for today. He put this whole variety show together and long distance while he's working full time and he doesn't get home till after 10 o'clock at night. And I just want you all to know that this was a huge gift from William that he wanted to give all of you um, in honor of being a breast cancer survivor and in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So kudos to you, William. This was amazing. This, I hope I hope you guys liked it. It was really awesome. I knew I knew just bringing Deborah in, it was going to be great. So I didn't. That was know fantastic, just by itself. Okay. It's going to be fine. But uh, I really I cannot wait till life get back. Let's get life gets back to whatever this new normal is supposed to be. And um, I love the idea of coming back down there. Down there. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, um, I'm not going again, huh? Are you, do you hear me as an echo? It's echoing a little bit, but yeah, it's echoing a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so. Um, I would like to say that um, one of the things that I think is the greatest gift, I really enjoyed this, but I think it's so uplifting, but I think one of the greatest gifts is that it'll be posted and we can listen to it again. Maybe oh. we'll really need it. Um, I did um, take part in the last session you and Deborah did, and I have watched that again. Um, and I've shared it with some friends um, because um, I just think that was really neat. But I think today was even more so um, processing and what we need at this point in our journeys. Um, I agree. Absolutely. I agree. Thank you. That was, that was, I, I think it was wonderful. Thing. Yeah, and I, and yeah, and I, I want to I wanna thank you as well. Yeah. This was my first time attending, but it was awesome. And thank you for the encouragement. That means a lot. And I can tell that you were sincere. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you. I wish I could see you. Uh, your video is not on on my phone. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Angie. I appreciate that. Um, I really love this project. Uh, I was introduced to it um, really soon after I got to Charlotte. We did a charity event for, um, no, we did one of these, I think. Yeah, we did a Be Beautiful uh, uh, event. And Carol Ann actually was working uh, with them at the time and from Denise Antonacci and she invited me because we we're friends and she asked me if I would come help and I think I was just cutting hair or I can't remember what we were doing the first time I think we just did haircuts upstairs or something like that but um, but I loved it so much I, I loved the pink house I love Lynn I love Leslie I love the whole thing I love all of my survivor friends that I've met there and I see you there too Wendy it's nice to see you I haven't seen them so long um, but uh, I uh, I've loved the experience so much that I just kind of bullied my way on the project. I just started showing up. So they told me that, you know, they were, they were having like uh, monthly meetings about it. So I just started showing up at the meetings. Like I wasn't even invited to be like, you know, part of the process. I just, I, you know, Carol Ann said, oh yeah, we're meeting Tuesday at this time. And I just showed up Tuesday at that time. And, well, uh, my women, and I, I feel really honored and blessed that I get to be a part of this every month with Leslie. And um, like she said, I'm in New York. It's hard. It's, it's different. But I'm going to stay involved with you guys. I want to 
help bring you artists. And in fact, it's kind of cool because now I can bring you other artists. And before I was just bringing you artists from Charlotte. Now I can bring you artists from everywhere with Zoom, you know, while the Zoom thing continues. And similar to the way we brought in uh, uh, other people from out of town before to the Pink House, even when we get back to the Pink House, I want to be able to help bring talent to you and talent that you need. So please be in touch with Leslie. Let her know what you want to hear. Let her know what would help you. And when enough of you say it, then that's what we'll produce for you. We just Absolutely. Want, You're amazing, we William. Content. We just want content that makes you feel beautiful. You know, that makes you beautiful. That makes you feel like taking care of yourself. That makes you happy uh, uh, to be who you are. And that's really all we care about. I love the slogan, be you, be beautiful. That's exactly what we feel. And like I said, anything that you wanted, you wanted me to bring, I'll find them for you. So, you know, I think, you know, we found you someone that did browse, for example, right? Because people were asking about that. Um, so anything, please reach out to Leslie, let her know. She'll let me know. And I'm in New York now. I'm, I'm around a ton of great artists here. So we have everything we need here. I can find somebody for you to come in on Zoom meeting. Thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Everything I hoped it would be and more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank and can you, we give a, Can we give a round of applause to Deborah? Yeah. Uh, Deborah, yeah. you're, you're online now. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's give a round of applause. I love it. Yeah, she's so awesome. I'm, I'm basically going to keep harassing her to, uh, to do <laughs> She's gonna be my. She's gonna be my new my New York partner for Be You Be Beautiful. So I love anyone it. Anyone I don't know, she'll know, right? Any you know, she'll be Wait. able to help. Her. And then and then before you know it, we'll 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 be teaching you uh, Latin ballroom lessons. There you <laughs> dancing oh, before you know it. <laughs> and we would love that. <laughs> you can even be our Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> we could. That's another one of my uh, my uh, hobbies. Ain't no kidding, Leslie. Can we bring her in as one of the dancers from Dancing with the Stars? That would be awesome. She's been doing this like her whole life. You know, we we'll we'll make up while you're doing the cha cha cha. <laughs> Deborah, our fundraiser for Carolina Breast Friends every year is a local Dancing with the Stars. And if you seriously, I mean seriously, wanted to come to Charlotte and help with makeup, I mean it is a huge, it, it it's a huge performance. It it's very impressive. So. We can talk about no, that no, offline. No, <laughs> no, 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 What I was saying was, let's bring her in as a dancer. We'll do her name. We'll do her name. <laughs> we'll do her name. <laughs> Getting so excited. I was thinking of teaching everybody how to dance. <laughs> as well. <laughs> it's all a mishmash of creativity going on. <laughs> I like it. I'll tell you what. Um, but I'll tell you what. When, um, when, uh, oops, we're echoing it. Can you turn that one down? Okay. Um, when, when life comes back to normal, we're, uh, uh, we do want, I do want to come down and I'll, I'll do my best to try and convince her to come down too. But, uh, we do want to, I want to come down and, and do a class with you. And I also want to be a part of it. And also, um, I didn't even think about that, Leslie, but keep me in tune with that as well, because, um, you know, it'll be was, in April. It's in April. It's in April. Okay. So, um, I want to make sure you get set up because you know, I'm the one that kind of organizes getting the students there that are backing up the makeup and hair team. So uh, that's great. That's great. Um, I can't think of the name of the stylist that was helping us last year. That I, I know if I said it, you would know her name. I, I uh, wait. Why is it? Oh, now it's not it's just on the tip of my tongue. She works at Salon Eight. She's absolutely wonderful. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't think of it right now. I'm embarrassed that I can't think of it right now because she's so awesome and she's a friend of mine. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forgive me. I've yeah. learned so many new names at my new job. It's, it's like it's hard to keep it I all know. straight. I but, know. Um, but anyway, uh, I really appreciate you guys. I can't wait for next month. Um, I don't know what we're doing yet, but I, I, I know I'll be somehow involved. And <laughs> That's right. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. And and I, uh, I look forward to getting your email, Deborah. And thank you so much for being with us. This was amazing. And thank you to all of our survivors who joined us. And thank I you. hope.
You're, you're yeah. so welcome. And I hope everybody has a wonderful evening.